28 years, Professor. Let's see what kind of galaxy we woke up to. We had a very specific story we wanted to tell, and in particular, new characters that we wanted to introduce. And I think RTS players have higher expectations from story, and we wanted to make sure we did that in the strongest way possible. At the end of the original game, the Spirit of Fire and its crew were adrift in space. The crew's in cryosleep, and fast forward 28 years later to Halo Wars 2, they awake to find themselves above a Forerunner installation. Halo fans, especially those who've played Halo 3, will recognize it as the Ark. It's the largest and most powerful of the Forerunner creations, and it's also the birthplace of the Halos. It's literally the place that made all of the Halo rings, so that's the kind of power that's contained there. The only connection they have when they wake up is a small signal, one emergency beacon, that's coming from the surface of the Ark down below. We wanted to put everybody in this position where things are different, things are new, no one's really sure what's going on. You know, Isabel is a very different kind of AI. She's a logistics AI. She's not a military AI. She is not like a Cortana or a Serena. She shows up in a way that we haven't seen AIs behave in Halo before. She's freaked out. She's seen all of her friends die. She's seen her outpost destroyed. She's a little trepidatious, does not want to stick around. She warns them that something bad is still on the Ark and that they need to run away. The Spartans from Halo Wars, last time you saw them was in the original Halo Wars, just tearing down a pack of elites. And here are those same Spartans being taken apart by one guy. Who is this guy? They meet Atriox for the first time. He surprises them. The Spartans expect a brute. They get much more than a brute in Atriox. There's actually more to this guy. He's not just a really strong brute. He's good at tactics. He's good at outthinking his opponents. That was the genesis of that character, of what if one brute was not only stronger than the others, but also incredibly intelligent. Atriox is, is something the universe hasn't seen before. The fact that he can surprise and then beat three Spartans in hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, sets the stage for who's in charge of the Banished and the kind of threat they pose. From a visual standpoint, we wanted to carry over enough of the original Covenant technologies, but at the same time, being in your face, more about hard hitting and close combat. You know what a Wraith does if you've played Halo, but you've never seen a Wraith look like this before. Lots of layered armor, lots of ramming spikes things that spoke to a brute's sensibilities and aesthetic choices. This is who they're going to have to fight. This is who Captain Cutter has to beat. Our astro-navigation system can't pinpoint a location. We're not on the map anymore. But as the captain of this ship, he is 28 years out from his last set of orders. Like, what do you do when you are supposed to report into this hierarchy, but you literally haven't seen them for almost three decades? We didn't drift out of the galaxy in 28 years, Professor. The crew wakes up, they have no idea what's going on, and he comes across this massive banished force. He's always chosen his crew over his own advancement. They've been through hell and back, and they wake up in this universe they don't understand, and he's going to do whatever he needs to do to protect his crew. And that sets off a really fascinating face-off.